Hi, my name is Luisa Alvarez Restrepo, and I lead all festival initiatives for Warner Media Access Canada. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a Latin American woman with long, dark, curly hair and a green top. I am speaking to you from Tocoronto, known as Toronto, the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. It is also the current home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis people. Here at Warner Media Access Canada, we are focused on creating opportunities for underrepresented Canadian talent in above and below the line roles. Our programming includes a director's program, a writer's program, and vocational training in areas such as animation, virtual production, and hair and makeup. British Columbia is Warner Media's largest production hub in Canada, which is why I am so excited to introduce the panel, Opportunity Knox, Below the Line Talent, co-hosted by our very own Erica Kumar, who leads our Below the Line placement initiative, Access to Action. In the panel, you'll hear from some of our incredible talent working on shows right in your own backyard. If you'd like to learn more about Warner Media Access Canada, our Below the Line efforts, and how to get involved, make sure to follow us on our social media channels. Hello, everyone. My name is Erica Kumar, and I'm manager for Warner Media Access to Action, a program that provides individuals from underrepresented communities with entry-level job opportunities on Warner Media Productions. I'd like to start, start by giving thanks to the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations for their continued stewardship of the unceded and occupied land on which we live and work. I would now like to introduce you to my co-host for the session, BC Film Commissioner Marnie G. Marnie thanks, Erica. Thanks, Erica. My name is Marnie G, and I am the BC Film Commissioner and Director of Production Services at the Provincial Film Commission at Creative BC. I'm grateful to be a part of this panel, and I'm joining you here today from uh, my home in the Musqueam, uh, unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil -Waututh First Nations. Um, I am thrilled to introduce a fabulous group of panelists, uh, and we're going to jump right in. Uh, we have Maya Manny, who is a costume designer with Batwoman. We also have Grayson Sangster, who's an assistant location manager with Superman and Lois. We have Roxanne Rafik, uh, second AD with Superman and Lois. We also have Amanda McGowan, who is a key makeup artist on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. And we also have Anand Ray, who is a production designer also on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Um, okay, we only have a short amount of time, so I'm going to jump right into the questions for our panelists. Um, let's start with what your role is, uh, sort of a two-part question. I will go around. Uh, what is your role and what was your path into the industry? And uh, I'm going to start with Grayson. All right. Um, so I'm the Assistant Locations Manager on Superman and Lois. Uh, my role is to coordinate with a lot of the departments. Uh, for prep, for shoot, and for wrap. It's to calm down the neighbors when we have bright lights on. It's to get all the applications in for any location that we're shooting at. Um, and if we're going to coordinate with fire, uh, we need ambulance, um, cops, and all that sort of stuff. So essentially, we get everything ready so that um, the rest of the shoot crew can show up and not be shut down in the, long, in the short term of things. Um, how I got into the industry. Um, to be honest, how I got into the industry was another person of color saw me and uh, asked what I was doing. I said, no, actually, like, are you interested in film? And I was like, I just moved here. Um, I had a friend that was in film and um, uh, I was taking a break from my career. And I was like, sure, why not? And that is how this started. And I said, I'm going to do this for a year. And almost seven years later, here I am. So, that's how it all And uh, Maya. Um, my name is Maya. I am a costume designer on Batwoman. I, I seem to be specializing in superhero suits of late for some reason for the last 10 years, Arrow, Flash, blah, blah, blah. Um, my job is to tell the story of the characters through their clothing and uh, to contribute to the visual on the screen. 
I got into this industry. Well, I started off obviously like most people dressing up their pets, you know, that's what we do. Um, but I got into this industry on a dare of all things. I had taken a course at George Brown College and a friend of mine was a production manager. He was able to, uh, this is gonna sound grand, offer me a job as the assistant designer. I'd like to point out there were two of us in the department. So, you know, not very grand at all. It was um, a non-union movie. There were eight people in the cast. Seven of them died, seven of those characters died. And I was paid $500 a week. We worked seven days a week. And yes, we got 17 hour days. And I can't remember a time I've been happier, believe it or not, so. Amazing. Um, Amanda. Uh, I'm the uh, head of the department of uh, DC Legends of Tomorrow. I run the makeup department. I help the writers, the director and the actors design the look for the role in a specific scene. Uh, it could range from uh, a beauty look in different time periods to a soldier in a battlefield to a zombie look. Um, how I got into the film industry. At the age of seven, standing in the doorway, I loved watching my mum get ready for work. The backcombing of her hair, the lack of oxygen in the bathroom from all the hairspray to the steady hand that she had applying her eyeliner is when I discovered that you could transform yourself with makeup. It wasn't, um, so it was not until I moved to Australia from New Zealand in 94 that I took a, a bridal course on how to apply makeup for weddings. I was so elevated from doing the course, it was so creative that I wanted to learn more about makeup. The school where I had done my bridal had a one year film makeup program. It was a no brainer for me, I signed up. In 2000, my husband and I immigrated to Vancouver for both to be involved in the film industry. I started volunteering on student films, music videos, um, movie of the weeks. I did that for 10 years. And then I moved on to episodic television, uh, which I've been doing for around 10 years. Amazing. That's a great uh, journey for sure. Um, was that me? Nah, hi, sorry, I couldn't hear, hear you for a second. But yeah, I'm the production designer. My name is Anand Ray. I'm the production designer on DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Um, my my role as such I, is to, in, in one sentence, to design the look of the show, um, design sets, uh, whatever you see on camera, uh, technically, I guess the production designer is uh, uh, responsible for it. Uh, to an extent. So yeah, I, I design sets, I um, design locations, and whatever you see there. I work closely with the director to, and the director of photography to make sure that uh, you get to see a good product. Um, my journey, I, have a, I studied uh, architecture and design. I came to this country about nine years ago. Um, I had not worked in film before. I had worked in design, but I'd never worked in film. I came here, I took a job in a restaurant uh, because I couldn't get a job in design. And then by chance, I came across a, a course in production design at Langara College. And I took that and it helped me meet people and network. And the next thing you know, I, I sent a thousand applications to different shows in the art, for, the, for, a, for an art department assistant role. And then I worked my way, my way up. So yeah. it's been Great. fun. It's been fun. <laughs> nice, thank you. Um, and Roxanne. Yes, um, I'm Roxy. I'm the second AD on uh, Superman and Lois. Uh, I basically am the right hand, I guess, woman to my first AD, um, so he can concentrate on running set, and I try and just help with all the all the things going on around it. Um, I try. The main job is trying to smooth the chaos uh, for all the departments and try and communicate as much as I can and help everyone know what's happening and what's changing so everyone else can kind of do their thing and make the show look awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I got into it I from Australia and I studied for four years and then the industry, it's kind of booming a little bit now, but 
six, seven years ago, it wasn't. So I moved to Canada because I heard it was pretty busy. Um, and then it was. I moved over and I just kind of emailed all the productions on the list. And then someone got back to me and I started PAing. And then I got into key PA and then I, you know, met the ADs and then that kind of went up from there, tad, third, second. Yeah. That's really great. Um, you know, so I'm going to, uh, uh, I have so many questions, but I would, <laughs> my next one would is trying to get a better understanding of what uh, everyone's day to day looks like. I'm also curious about when you're brought on to a production, like, uh, or is everybody involved in prep? Um, so on end, I'm going to start with you because I'm really curious about like, when does a production designer's job start? And, uh, and I'm always curious is like, you know, as a production designer, are you on set every day or how, how does that work? Um, absolutely. I'll, I'll start with the first part of your questions. Um, I come in um, generally before the season starts. Uh, once we know we are picked up uh, or we, we're coming the next season, then sometimes I'm told what, what to expect for the next season or what, what are the sets we need to build. Sometimes I start right away. Sometimes I come in a few weeks before. But definitely, I think, um, same with, I would think, Maya, uh, we come in before to design stuff so that we can then be ready for when the uh, shoot starts. So normally, it depends from season to season, but at least about six weeks before we go to camera, or sometimes, oh, wow. even, sometimes even more. And, and Grayson, so, uh, so same question, just, uh, you know, I, I know you said that you were involved in prep. Um, I'm curious as to, as an ALM, what, what does your day-to-day -day look like? Well, today it started at 6 a.m. with a phone call, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's been most of my days since when we get back into the swing of things, departments calling um, to find out things. But uh, I would... I would say typically we start three weeks before production, depending on the size of the production. Uh, when we're doing movies, it's more like six weeks, but we get the scripts um, for some of the productions I've been on way before so we can read and kind of know what's going on for um, that movie or the first episode. Um, uh, my boss is the first one that comes on and he's the locations manager. Uh, and I typically start a week or two after him um, as his right-hand woman. Uh, on our show currently, there's four assistant locations managers. Wow. I'm uh, key. So um, when my boss is out of office, it, most stuff comes to me and then I have to deal with it. My buck stops at me. So, um, and our days are, you know, trying to put out small fires that show up or changes in the script or, uh, requirements that people need us to talk to the homeowners or the people around. Um, and then we also hire the production assistants that are on set. So making sure that they're there to help Roxy and the first ADs with sound lockups and stopping crew from meeting on set, things like that. So it's a, it's a very broad look. I, the, the saying is if, if another department doesn't want to do it, send it to locations, they'll deal with it. <laughs> Oh, um, that's that's very insightful. Thank you, um, uh, Amanda. I would love to get an understanding around, um, you know, that you you do all this prep for the for the makeup looks. I was wondering if there is any situations where you are coming up with looks on the day of. Do things mm -hmm. change, like, or you know, if there's all this planning involved, of course. But I'm curious about, you know, your day to day, and do you often have to pivot or Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's the film industry, but I'll let you answer that question. Yeah, uh, generally my, I get up at around 4 a.m. in the morning. Um, I do like getting up early in the morning, which helps. Um, every day there are different challenges, um, which I love because you just, your brain's always clicking over. Um, could I give you one example of a challenge? I had, I had a, I a stunt, stunt performer that had a... Um, a beard and I didn't want to shave him because he was growing it and the character, his character had a longer beard. So I really, really didn't want to shave it. And so I asked the stunt coordinator, oh, what was the scene? And it was exterior, uh, nights, woods, and he was stepping out of a car. So he wasn't being, um, he wasn't jumping off a roof or getting flown across the camera. 
So what I did was I got some heavy duty uh, glue, like not spirit gum, it's called super baldies. It's like, it's like treacle. And I glued it there and then I got top stick. And so I did glued the top stick on the beard and then put the, the top stick on his beard. So then I had a beard on top of a beard. <laughs> so that was just pretty wild because I'd never done that before. Because you generally shave and then you put the glue on the skin and then you pray. So when he hopped out of the car, I was praying that his beard <laughs> stayed on and it did. So that was, you just get crazy challenges all the time and you just got to figure it out. So you have to prepare for chaos is essentially just yeah. prepare for prepare for not knowing what's going to happen the day of. Um, Maya, we had a great chat earlier this week and I was really um, interested in your day to day and actually understanding uh, the size of your team was really um, shocking to me as someone who doesn't know uh, as much about physical production. So I'd love to, uh, to ask you the same question. What does your uh, day to day look like and uh, are you on set? Uh, uh, very often or you know um what is your experience on on your uh, I say by the time things go to set 90 percent mm -hmm. of my job is done and if it isn't then i'm sweating um <laughs> i would say and when i first started as i mentioned before there was myself and one other person and then when i first moved to vancouver it was myself one other person and two people on set so now i find myself with almost 30 people in my department which is outrageous really <laughs> there's so many people it's like having a classroom um it's between the sewing room and we have a huge stock in the back just to because of the stunt performers and the background and all the rest of that they all get dressed out of that um and then there's the shoppers and there's also a lot of accounting involved all of a sudden so now you need somebody to track all the purchases and make sure the inventory is there and dot your eyes, cross your T's, la la la. So um, I do go to set for sure. Uh, mostly when the bigger costumes are being established, um, but not on a, I've so far managed to avoid going out to Abbotsford or Surrey. Okay, uh, nothing against those places. So no cards about that, but it's just, I, it's a lot of travel. So travel. I try to make sure that whenever I go to set, it's close by. That's, That's great. That's really exciting because it's it's really great on the uh, to understand how many jobs there are within that department um, that don't necessarily um, you don't necessarily need to be able to sew costumes in order to be a part of your department, um, which mm -hmm. is which is really it exciting. Helps. But it, it helps, helps, I'm sure. <laughs> if you know how a garment goes together, it really does help. There's nothing worse than having somebody go out there and they know absolutely nothing about clothing. And, you know, it's great to think on your feet. I, I like all those little challenges. Um, I'm a big believer that you can draw anything. It doesn't make it so, right? You still have to translate it from the drawing to an actual person wearing that costume, getting thrown across the street and set fire to, right? <laughs> like there's... Some some little challenges that we have, you know, that uh, have to be addressed. And it's not, to not have, know how a garment goes together, it makes it a little challenging to communicate. I am not the best stitcher, I'll say that right out loud. I'm not the best cutter, but I do know how to communicate with those two departments so that they can understand what I'm trying to do. That's great. That that is, yeah, that is very, you know, so anyone looking to do their homework, start looking uh, into how you put garments together uh, and also maybe start taking things apart and seeing if you can figure out how to place it back together. <laughs> uh, Roxanne, I'm so curious after hearing, uh, uh, hearing what Amanda said, I I'd love to know, like, so what time do you get up in the morning and what does your day look like <laughs> as a second AD? Well, it's not, as bad as a third AD. That's when you're a third, you're coming in with the Jenny alt pretty much, and you're leaving when the last person leaves. So that's the perk. Once you become a second, you get to go into prep. So every second, when you're on TV, every second episode, you get to be with the first and actually be in all the meetings and prep everything. And um, so basically, I think like day to day, I would start, you know, you're on set with the ADs and you're helping them get on the floor. 
Um, but then you're really the only AD in the department that's concentrating on the next day. And you're working like said pretty much same with Grayson. And, and it's kind of, you're just making sure you're building the call sheet and it depends. Like sometimes it can be smooth and sometimes at lunch they're like, oh, you know what? We can't go to this location tomorrow. So now we're doing this. So it's like those moments are like the moments when you really have to kind of kick into gear and like <laughs> get the, you know, it's a lot harder, but, uh, but they're the fun moments. They're the moment, like, you know, you, I didn't get into film to like, um, just, ch you know, have an office job, I guess. Even though I'm on my laptop or doing a call sheet, you're out on a rainy field doing a call sheet and, you know, running over to costumes and like ringing up Maya and being like, so can we jump to this scene? And she's like, well, the costume's not ready, you know? So it's, <laughs> It's a lot of working with all the departments and, you know, the sets and um, yeah, it's, and it goes from start to finish and then phone calls at night and then back in the morning and re restart all over again at a new location. Yeah. But it's really fun. <laughs> That's great. I was just going to jump in and uh, it's something that uh, I certainly remember from my, my time uh, working in production and I, I also worked in locations like Grayson did and, and I want to just ask about um, for all of you the collaboration that happens with other departments and how important those relationships are, um, particularly with changing schedules and, and flipping days depending on location availability and weather changes or cast and crew availability particularly I would assume in these last 18 to 20 months with, with the changes and, and sudden changes in terms of um, whether it be crew or cast availability. But I, I'm gonna throw it to you, Grayson, just to talk about how you collaborate with other departments and how important that is. Uh, well, for locations, uh, collaboration with all departments is so important. Um, you know, being able to give the information of what a homeowner or a business owner says can do, is so important for it to trickle down and to have people who trust you and that you trust so that they won't go in, run amok and upset whoever is there. Uh, Roxy and I talk regularly um, with her schedule and you know figuring out um, the times that we can be in there, our curfews, uh, how many PAs, things like that. Um, transport is, transport um, is probably one of the best friends of locations because if transport's not moving your stuff, nothing's happening. Like it's just, it's one of those things where my department especially has to communicate with everybody of when they're allowed to be somewhere and when they're not and what they're allowed to do from, you know, the grip department being able to attach things to a ceiling, the, the LX people being allowed to switch out lights, all of that has to come through our department to coordinate with either the homeowner or the business owner. Um, and then comes just like figuring out where all the trailers and the work trucks and the stashes and like, you know, the special effects, all of that is coordinated with location for on the day. So it, it's pretty busy. Um, I typically, uh, like I said, start my day on the phone at six in the morning and it can go up until like, you know, um, the day's done uh, of our shoot day. Um, my phone is always on. And um, by the time the weekend comes, I typically spend it by myself because I'm just talked out. So <laughs> it's, I don't, I'm sure people in the same way. Uh, yeah. uh, get home and they want the weekend of just like, you just want silence. Like I now understand what my mom always said with, <laughs> as kids running around and she's like, I just want silence. And yeah. No one calling your name or asking you a question, I'm sure. Um, and, and sort of in the same vein, but I was just thinking, I'm, I'm curious, Anand, Maya and Amanda, um, from a design perspective in that collaboration, you know, Anna and Maya, Amanda, when you're, when you're looking at the production design of uh, whether it be a, a you know, superhero or, or a period piece, how much collaboration there is between your departments in terms of the look uh, with, with the character and the design of the, of the production. I'll, I'll start with you, Anna, as, as the production designer to speak to. Thank you, Mani. Uh, so, uh, yeah, no, I, I work with all the teams, I think, closely, very closely with construction, paint, uh, to start with uh, set deck props, greens, um, grips, electrics, stunts, special effects, visual effects, 
costumes when there is there's an overlap then uh, uh, we could talk to them um, to let them know what are the colors of the set so that they can then plan their costumes accordingly um, uh, those ones where on the set we had a green carpet and then the person wearing the costume was green and that'll never <laughs> happen again but things like that <laughs> avoid things like that uh, we talk, like, <laughs> that's an oopsies <laughs> <laughs> so it was almost the same color and the scene was that the actor falls on the floor <laughs> and it's almost like he, he's, he disappears so we think that, <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> but things like that happen and uh, it's like uh, you how you solve how your problem solve is what the job is all about um, then with um, hair and makeup uh, from time to time again uh, for example if we have a tattoo or something then we'll uh, talk to Amanda and then uh, design it for her and then she does the application and stuff like that and uh, but yeah a picture cars locations uh, every everyone like I think uh, that's what I love about this job I get to meet everyone I get to interact with everyone so it's a lot yeah. of it really is amazing, isn't it? The intricacies and and the and sort of the co uh, cooperation and collaboration that has to happen. Maya, you you know to that point, working with design and and costumes as well. Interesting to hear from you. Um, well, yes. I, on in my case, when I was on one show, the superhero wore a green costume, and there was really nowhere around that. And we had a couple of oopsies there where. Sorry, I, I can't change him. He's the green arrow. That's what he is. Um, can't do green screen. Sorry. Something else, folks. Um, but in one case, uh, locations phoned up and said, we have a very sensitive home owner. Uh, and we had this big party scene, formal party scene. And so they wanted absolutely no stiletto heels on their floor, which is understandable because the floor was really expensive. So then you go to the production designer and say, can you help me out in any way? Because this is a formal party and I don't know anybody who wears flip-flops to a formal party. So there has to be a little wheel room here. And thankfully the production designer just put down a floor, put down a carpet. The floor was protected, locations was happy. The owners were happy. I was happy. Everybody was like, you know, singing Kumbaya, it was great. So, um, I tend to design very proppy costumes. So I have a very tight relationship with the props department. Um, as far as concepts go, um, I will always show them to hair and makeup so that at least they know what's coming down the pipe and they don't have to react on the day. Um, I have to liaise with the second AD saying, yep, yeah, it really does take her 30 minutes to get into that thing. I'm really sorry, but it's 30 minutes. Um, we try and let everybody know where we stand. And we learn a lot of things in the fittings that maybe uh, need to be communicated so that, that when the character goes or the actor goes to set, they know what's coming. And, you know, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I, Amanda, I saw you shaking your head as well with, with everything Anand and Miles. Oh, definitely. Um, I think for me, when I'm thinking about a character, the very first thing I do is I ask the costume designer what the look is and that really just really helps me and sets the tone for what the look is, whether um, they're in a black outfit with a, a red belt and red boots. Um, then I go to the hair designer. Uh, for example, this one character, she's gonna be wearing a long red wig. So then we're gonna be doing like an ombre red nails and a red lip, so it's all, seeing what everyone else is doing and then bringing all the details together, um, which I really love doing. And then it's just so exciting, everyone's collaboration and creativity all coming together and there's this harmony um, on the screen, uh, which I think is amazing. Um, I also work closely with the stunt coordinator, trying to figure out um, who, uh, what stunt people are playing and then trying to match them the best to the, to the actor, um, whether they need to be shaved or whether they need to have their tattoos covered. Um, all that information is so vital in the prepping. So then I can uh, crew uh, accordingly because of, because of timing, everything has to be ready at a certain time. And then you have to figure out the, the workload. You just don't want any surprises on the day. So 
I, I tell my team, um, to be a great makeup artist, you have to be a great detective. You have to ask the questions and uh, figure it out so that there's no surprises on the day. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, as I said, I, I come way back from production, but thinking about, um, you know, that, that collaboration between everyone and then looking at Roxanne as she's <laughs> taking in all that information because the changes that come often, uh, it will be someone from the AD department and locations working closely together. But Roxanne, you have a lot of departments to tie in together and share information and, and balancing out that timing of what people need uh, that's going to affect the day. Yeah, it's like for an example, like what Amanda was saying, it's like, you know, if, if she is a stunt person, she's going to do a ball cap or she's going to add a beard you know, we'll chat about it the day before. What does this person look like? How long is it going to be? How long is hair need? What's the costume? Is it is it a tricky costume? And then with Grayson, it's like, where circus to set? You know, sometimes it's 15 minutes. And then, you know, I've got to make sure that the cast is 100% on set when my first day would be wants it with, you know, all the other departments within that. And it's like kind of working backwards. And then, then the third comes in and then the Jenny <laughs> But yeah, and, that's and really great. I love that idea of like working back, you know, that working backwards and like, where do you want to get to? And then mm -hmm. how do we all collaborate to get there is really yeah. interesting. Um, I, that's the I, thing, it is collaboration. It's, yeah. you know, it's like a ballet. There's no point leaping if there's no one to catch you, really. <laughs> so, love that. You know, it's if we don't work together, it's a hot mess, guaranteed. And you don't get yeah. your day, and then people are crying. It's not good. Yeah, and if I may, uh, the beauty of it is the time that it's done, and like in the real world, it probably take uh, six months to build a house, and we do it in like a matter of weeks. And there are so many teams and so many things that are involved, and in every every department works and works together. Um, as a cohesive unit and does a wonderful job and that's what makes it happen so that's really exciting to hear as you know access to action we're working you know we're we're placing uh, PAs onto Warner Media Productions. And I think it's really exciting for those um, entry level uh, you know, positions or for people going into those entry level positions to understand that how much collaboration happens between the departments and what they'll get to see. So you know, just because you're in one department or you know, say for example, you're just in locations, you're not just in locations, you're working with everybody and that's what I'm beginning to learn about the about being on set which I think is really exciting is that um, you're in one department but you still get to meet the other departments you get to understand what they do and you still get to work with them which is which is very exciting um, I want to be cognizant of time and I know we have more questions here but I would love to um, okay which now here's the question what do I what do we ask next? But I would love to get a, an understanding of, you know, I, you'd all mentioned sort of what your pathways into the industry was. Um, does anybody want to speak about, uh, about any, perhaps any challenges they faced getting into the industry? Um, again, you, do, you know, if, if, uh, if anybody wants to speak about anything that they had to, you know, um, was it difficult getting in or did you, was there a situation that uh, was particularly difficult being perhaps a newcomer to the industry? Um, uh, I, so my past career was, um, I was an architect. I still am, I, I always say I was, but I still am. Um, and the industry is very different from real world jobs. And I think that a lot of people are under the impression that um, film is all Hollywood and, lights, camera, action. And in truth, I think I was living kind of a bit of a dream when I entered the industry. Um, you know, you, for, for where I've come from, you're, you need education. So when you walk in, people respect you and know what you're capable of and want to, um, you, you know, you, you do the thing, you do it in the, the order it's supposed to be when you're in the real world. And then you get into film. And everything you learned, you need to unlearn because film is so unconventional. And, and that's probably what it ma what makes it so exciting for me. And, um, you know, when I entered 
I, I didn't see a lot of people of color and that was just like my other career. And um, so there was a lot of, um, I, I wouldn't say that my moving up in this industry has been the easiest of, um, uh, it hasn't been the easiest. And there has been days where I, I have to put my foot down and, and remind people that I earned my place here and things like that. So I, I don't wanna sugarcoat it for anyone, but the reward in film is incredible some days. Like when you turn on the TV and see some of the projects that you've done, you can be like, man, all that work for 20 seconds on film and you laugh about it, right? Like you, you <laughs> I can tell you. It looks so good, it looks so good. Like, good. Three days, try, like getting ready to blow up this thing, plus the two months with the cities, trying to coordinate everything. And the explosion lasted all of like three seconds. And you're like, cool. <laughs> but I, I I think something that has been really awesome is um, for me personally in film is that each challenge that is presented to me, whether it be in moving up or within the industry, trying to coordinate with people and working with people of different backgrounds and personalities and stuff, when you actually accomplish it and and after all the like, you know, frustrations and disagreements and, and how to do it or disappointments that something didn't work out, when you accomplish that final goal, it's, it's incredible. It's an incredible feeling. And um, I, you know, we just, Roxanne and I just came out of a very difficult location, um, which we had to flip. And uh, she told me they got their stuff done last night. So I'm like over the moon ecstatic because I was like super worried about it, but Again, like when you when you reach that point where you're like, ah, we did it, we did it. It's like, oh, thank God. Like it was totally worth it. All 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 the the pain that came, like all the hard work, it 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 ends up being completely worth it. That's so great. I mean, I I think that really, you know, um, uh. I would love to, you know, lead into the next question is just would be what advice then, you know, we, we discussed that, yes, that there's challenges, but um, there are a lot of rewards in the industry. So, um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, why don't we go to you, Roxanne, just to, you know, what are, what is someone, what is some advice you would give to someone wanting to become an AD? Uh, join the DGC AD. as soon as possible. <laughs> it's a process to join the unions. Um, so uh, for me, it was the biggest challenge because especially there's a lot of people here that aren't from Canada. Um, so, you know, you can't join fully until you're a permanent resident. There's all these classes. So just the sooner you look into it and work out, you can just call and work out what you need to do. Just start it straight away. Even if you don't even know your path yet, a lot of people start in locations just to be on set. So they might think they want to do props and then they get in and they're like, oh, they're a PA and they're like, oh, I like what the ADs are doing or I like what costumes are doing. So I would just say like, just get on set as soon as possible and just look at what everyone's doing. And, and then I think you'll work out what you want to do. Um, and if it's ADing, um, just work on joining DGC. And then when you move up, I would just say, uh, try and just embrace the chaos and don't let it, stress you or freak you out because when you're in that if you get in that mode you're going to be useless to everyone you know you need to be the one you need to be the one calm and communicating why everyone else is running around and trying to get their stuff done so yeah however you can do that <laughs> that's really great advice calm and communicative is really great um maya do you have any um you know advice for someone that would like to get into costumes um i would say um I'll say it again, learn how to sew would be really great. I would say that once you get an interview, if you get the interview, look up the show you're interviewing for, look up the person that you're interviewing with, because then at least you'll know a little bit more than nothing at all. Because there is a difference between say, even amongst the CW shows uh, between Legends of Tomorrow and Flash and Superman and Lois and Batwoman. They're all very, very different shows. They all come at it differently. So, and they all have a very distinct style. So, and if you don't have whatever network they're on, YouTube it. Just, but do a little bit of research. I, I think that would see you um, 
a long way. I think every, there's been a few people who have said communication. I think communication is key. You can't do anything without it. Otherwise, everybody's sort of spinning in their own little bubble and it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, volunteer, Vancouver Film School, they do movies all the time. Maybe, you know, go out there and do a couple of those. See, there's much smaller, there's, they're a little safer in some ways. Um, do commercials, do rock videos like Amanda did, you know, get your foot in it. And um, I think, I mean, I, a lot of people have gotten into this through the people they met, but that's how you meet people. So networking and yeah, uh, that's, that's great. On it, I'm curious about, you know, does somebody need to have a design background or to be able to draw or draft to be in your department, to be in you know, what is the skill set that you think somebody needs in order to, to, to get into to production design? Um, it's very similar to what Maya said. You have to learn, know how to draw. It definitely helps because that's what we do all day. Um, we also do other things. We coordinate, but it comes down to understanding how things are built. And uh, you don't have to be, it doesn't, it's not necessary. You have to take a specific course, but you need to know how to draw and build or uh, the, because we, Set, for set design, we draft a lot. And then for graphics, it's a creative aspect. We draw a lot again. Um, like I say, the, the software doesn't matter. It's what, because you design in your head, you, your, your software is just gonna help you express what you're drawing. So whether you draw by hand, whether you draw on a specific software, it doesn't matter, but yes. Um, knowing how things are built will definitely help, but you, you can also learn on the job um, to an extent, but, um, it, it, it'll be, it always helps if you know how to draw. That's great. We have a couple, I think we have a couple more minutes or Marnie, do we have our first question? Um, we do, but, but is there anyone else that would like to just to, to speak to that to throw some advice out there before we ask our first question? Amanda? I just want to say the, um, the BC Film Commission has a wonderful uh, website and um, it has a list of all the productions that are running in BC. And when I was looking for work, that was my Bible. And I would just go through, look at their production email, and then I would send my resume. Um, I would ring up and say, oh, who is the head of the Department of Makeup? And then I would send my resume there. And even if, even if you've got one credit or two credits, it, it doesn't matter. We all started somewhere. Um, yeah. And I, I would love to see resumes, and I would love to see who's out there. And it just shows you your passion and where you are and who you've worked with. So don't be afraid to turn your resume out. Yeah, and that's great. That's that's uh, our team uh, from, from the Provincial Film Commission. And I and I, we do want to jump into the question, but we also work really closely with all the labor organizations with IATSE and the DGCBC. And they often, when people call and say, how do I get into film, we'll send them to us. And our team will actually spend time with people on the phone and sort of talk them through some things. And I think, uh, and we're just in the throes uh, in the next month or so of launching a new website, uh, which is Creative Pathways Canada. And we've worked with all of the labor organizations on um, identifying all the departments and the, and the titles and which uh, labor organization you can work with depending on what you wanna do. Um, so creativebc.com, you can find the website for the film commission um, because it's, it's, as we know, uh, it's, it's, it's an intricate sometimes bit of a maze that you need to get through. And if you don't know anyone, it can be incredibly um, overwhelming, I think, and probably a little scary. And so we're really hoping uh, as an industry in BC, certainly as a jurisdiction to try to demystify some of that and talk about um, great programs like Warner Media's Access to Action and how we can collaborate uh, with labor organizations and studios to provide some opportunities for people to start getting into the industry. Um, so I'm really happy to hear that you use that. And we work with the, with the Guild on their production list as well. So um, I am going to, uh, uh, this is a great question. I, I can already see, imagine what everyone's face will say. Um, how do you achieve work-life balance and take care of your physical and mental well-being with the long hours? That is a very important a question. Great question. Great question. <laughs> Who would like to, to jump in? I'm still trying to work it out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say the same. I'm going to say the same. 
Well, I'll throw it in there. I, I mean, I would say film is not for the faint of heart. So if you're expecting a job to, um, for it to be an eight hour day and you get your lunch at the same time, th that's just not gonna happen. And there's no point anybody saying that it is because it isn't. Um, I, I am a mother of two. I put them through university doing what I do. So um, film has a lot to offer. What I liked about it was the flexibility of being able to work on a show and then take a solid amount of time off and actually do something with my kids. Um, actually, the film has allowed me to travel all over the world, which has brought me to different cultures and different challenges and some were easier than others. <laughs> some were like, really, we're doing this <laughs> here? Um, but uh, work life is a tricky one. And I think it's, it's even trickier now with COVID to be able um, I think you have to learn to say no. So when you do one show and you get another one, just say no. Yeah. That's really all I can say. And um, I just was gonna say, well, everyone, Amanda, Grayson, Roxanne, and I'm sure Anand as well, like, you know, particularly the hair, hair makeup sometimes, locations, ADs really are on long, long days. Uh, yeah, we get paid for a 15 hour um, uh, for, for ADs and um, locations. Uh, this year I invested in some office workout equipment. Uh, my office is big enough so I could fit a Peloton in it. Nice. Um, but I also invested in 24 hour fitness uh, so I can go and work out. I have a personal trainer that works around. He's also in the industry um, as an actor so he gets it. So if I have to cancel last minute, he understands. Um, and then I, two years ago started seeing a therapist to make sure that I kept everything in check and I'm not embarrassed. I talked to the PAs about it, about getting somebody that they can talk to. Um, and I've also made time to make phone calls to my parents and my brothers. Um, and it, it comes down to if you, I think a lot of people get caught up in the, the film life and the film world and they, and I think COVID was the big eye opener for me of how much of life I was missing. So when I came back to work last year um, to a different production, uh, I talked to my boss and I said, I need to find this balance. And um, when we switched productions this year, we happened to find um, an incredible PM and uh, producer who see crew as first. And I couldn't be more ecstatic about being on a show where I have a PM and a producer that believes that crew health is, is a priority. So, um, and, I, and I've been on many productions, many MOWs where that is not the case. And yeah. so um, when, when you find uh, a team and bosses who, who can see that that is a priority to keep crew members healthy so they can show up to work every day and do these incredibly long hours, um, you got to hold on to them and never let go. Um, yeah. Like percent. That's really, really good to hear, Grace. And I think, you know, also the labor organizations have, have worked together as well with Call Time Mental Health, which is also um, a really great initiative that's been supported by the labor organizations for people to make sure that there's support in place. Um, Erica, do you have any other questions? I do. I have another question. And I think it's actually, you know, we have a few, we have about, you know, six minutes left. And I think this is a really great, a great question. You know, now that all of you have established yourself in the industry, you know, uh, what's next? You know, how do you hope to grow your career? Um, you know, uh, let's start with, um, you know, uh, Amanda, why don't we start with you? You know, what are you, what are your future goals? Mm. just keep perfecting and uh, I don't know I just I'm excited about the future um, I'm excited about possibly DC Legends getting picked up again for season eight um, that's, that, that's a tough one because I'm just yeah. in a really happy place and I just want to continue that's on great. with uh what I'm doing and I just know that the universe will provide it so that's a great that that's fantastic I mean there's nothing wrong with being happy <laughs> or, or, or having reached you know that the point in your career where you uh 
where you are really happy with where you're at. That is, that is fantastic. Um, you know, Anand, uh, you know, how do you hope to grow your career? What would you like to do? You know, obviously you can continue doing what you're doing, but is there any, uh, you know, any career yeah, goals? I, I think every day is a new day. So uh, till I enjoy doing this, I'll do this. And uh, the day I find if it's too stressful, I'll probably step down and set design or something like that. But I will work in the art department. I think uh, that's that's where I see myself. That's where I see um, I can I can contribute. But yeah, uh, every show is a new show. Every day is a new day. So mm-hmm. as long as I enjoy doing this, one important thing I'll say is because you're doing this for hours and hours in a week, the day you don't enjoy it, you can't give your best to what you're doing. So that's, that's very important. That, that is for me, that's, that's where it uh, kind of, that's the crux, but yeah. That's great. Um, Maya, I, I, you know, you have worked on so many amazing shows. You know how to create superhero costumes, which is just the coolest to me. I think that's so, so amazing. Is there anything, you know, is there a, is there a costume out there that you'd still like to design? Is there a, you know, or is there a, is there an actor or producer, somebody you'd still like to work with? I'm sure there are many. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's many. I think for me, when I, when I first started doing superheroes, the technology wasn't there. Um, the fabrics have changed. So, We started doing leather suits and then, uh, you know, found stretchy fabrics that we could insert to give them a certain look. And then you realize you're working with stents and you're setting them on fire. So the materials have to support that. And okay, now what are we doing? Oh, we're, he's doing that now. Okay, well, we have to come up with something else. So the way superhero costumes have evolved with printing and um, the fabrics and the technology, you know, for a while there, there were parts of the flash suit, which um, there are these gloves that have um, silicone on them. They use them for abrasion. Motorcycle jackets have that stuff. So some of that was tried. So I, you know, you just keep trying different materials and see, is this working? Is this better? How do we make this faster? How do we make it better? Um, that's kind of fun, right? Because you're working with all these different departments. Uh, to me, my favorite part, because I'm a big believer movies are made in prep, not on not on set, you know, you're delivering the goods and then set has to make it work. But to have the special effects makeup artists, the props people, the actor, everybody there looking at this costume and seeing how to make it even better. That's a, like, that's magic right there. That's magic. And and no one gets to see that except for the people in that room. I mean, I think that's really great. So it's, you know, to, technology yeah. has helped grow your career because, you know, I, uh, there's so many more things that you can do now that you probably weren't able to do uh, originally. Um, I think but that's I'll it. Say, oh, I can do that, man. I'll do him. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that's it for us for time for today. I think we have one minute. I would love to continue chatting with everyone. Uh, I really want to uh, thank you on, on behalf of uh, Warner Media, Creative VC, Creative Pathways. Uh, I want to thank Viv for uh, for hosting this session and mostly just, uh, you know, obviously to my co-host Marnie and, and to the panelists for taking time out of your Saturday uh, to be with us. This has just uh, been really informative. Um, I, I hope it was in, in, in formative for the people that, uh, you know, joined us today, but I have to say on a personal note, it's been, I'm just constantly learning and I've learned so much from all of you today. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, uh, I agree and lovely to see you all. And, uh, so great to hear of the great work you're doing and, and just really proud of us as a jurisdiction to have such amazing people out there making great, great products, uh, for everyone to watch. Thank you.